communism. There's not much justice in Romania. And they will yeah. give you none, because it doesn't exist. You will find out the truth of this case soon. It's a matter of a Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode in a collaboration with Matter of Opinion and Rex Wu. Good so, to yeah. have you on the show, brother. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to be here. I love coming on your show. Rex Wu, let everybody know your channel, how they can find you, which your channel will be in the description so that people can definitely subscribe. Uh, my channel is it's very simple. It's just Rex Wu. Um you can look it up by kicking it podcast that'll pop up as well um i like to talk i like to have open discussions kind of like this one about insert topic here you know no topic is off limits short of calling for violence um yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes uh we, we, but uh yeah you know and uh you know i'm a huge martial artist fan as you guys can tell you know uh and uh so yeah martial arts and open discussions that's you know the way i live my life yeah, and, and, and I thank you guys for bringing me on. You know, it's always a pleasure. Here. Definitely, definitely. And I love your Sunday discussions. How you bring different different people on and have some deep discussions. Whether it's about you know um, financial literacy, whether it's about boxing or f the fight game or even religion. Like mm -hmm. it's a multitude of topics of different guests that Rex Wu will have on, and the conversations be engaging. So. What is today's topic? Andrew Tate. Everybody know Andrew Tate, the most searched man on the planet, multi-millionaire. And as of late, we know that he's been arrested in Romania for... Human trafficking. Yeah, human trafficking. There you go. And a lot of people are basically saying free Andrew Tate and he's not guilty of what he's done. And we actually did a live and was breaking down some of the content that he said that we thought was self-incriminating and you Rex Wu was in the comment and other people was like, I don't see what he said. That was really incriminating. Yeah, I remember that. That was like a, two weeks ago, I think. Yeah. 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 And the way I looked at it, I was like, that's kind of incriminating. So, but we're going to break down stuff that the Romanian police confiscated off of his computer. We're going to dissect that. And we're going to see if does this man have a call order as far as fighting for his freedom. Now, like I said before, it is known that this man is well loved. And over in Romania, you had people marching and saying, hey, free Andrew Tate. And actually people giving their two cents on why they love this man. So here's that clip. <laughs> You guys know who Andrew Tate is? Yeah. yeah. Do you yeah. like him? Yeah. Tell me what do you like about Andrew Tate? I like he's motivating all the young men in the world to like help them with their life and stuff. What is one thing that he told you that you really like? Like for example, you're like big or like fat. You like go to the gym and like work out to like be strong, rich. What I like about him is that how he teaches people not to be weak and how he tells people not to live up and helps them with basically everything. What do you want to tell Andrew Tate? Imagine he's in front of you right now. I'll tell him to like keep going and to never stop, like teaching men to be strong and rich. For me, it was basically also the same thing. I want to thank him for everything he's done to help people. All right. What I will say is Andrew Tate does have a way of speaking and motivating people to get off their asses and, you know, make moves, so to speak. So I definitely give that to him. He is definitely inspirational with, inspirational with his tone, his message. Some things I don't agree with, some things I do agree with. But at the end of the day, he does have a powerful voice that can reach the masses. What do you guys and gals take? I think it's about the same, too. I feel like people listen when he speaks. So because they listen when he speaks, you know, you 
are going to get two different types of people. You're either going to have people going, hey, I'm going to be a diehard for him and believe every word that comes out of his mouth. You're going to have the other type of person who is going to listen and start critiquing everything that comes out of his mouth. So it's, hey, I can listen in small dosages. And it's like, okay, you make sense. And then it's like, hey, you got the other person going, this is going to be my new life. It's almost that cult-like mentality. You have to be able to turn it off and on sometimes. And you have to think about the world that we're in. For the last few years, you've been watching people on social media. You've been not going out in public as often. You haven't been around your social circle as much. So you're gravitating to people with a message similar to what you want to listen to, or you're gravitating to somebody who's going to get you out of your comfort zone. Like, hey, let me start listening. Let me make these kind of active changes. It's almost like when people utilize those self-help books. It's like, hey, I already knew something similar to what I wanted to do. But then you start looking at those kind of people going, hey, once I start finding me somebody that aligns with something similar, then you're going to gravitate to every word. And that's the kind of personality that I grab from him. You, Rex? Um, as far as, like, him and his type is concerned, I mean, uh, it's like Erica was saying, like, you know, it's like the self-help books. Like, we've seen his type many times on the internet throughout the years. You know, like, it's like the Dan Bilzerians, the Ty Lopez's of these guys who always they come on, they explode on the, onto the internet. And they look like here in my garage, look at this Lamborghini. I don't know if you guys remember that video from 2015, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, and their messages, you know, like you can do it. You can, you can be great. You know, you can do amazing things. Uh, if, as soon as you buy my $20,000 course, uh, you can do a, you know, and the, 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 uh, the thing about these guys is 99% of them, they don't last. They're like flash bang. It's loud. It's crazy. The world loves them. But uh, let me ask you guys right now: Like, where is Dan Bilzerian? Where is Ty Lopez? We, we know, we haven't heard from them about yeah. them in ages. You know, uh. So, and and Andrew Tate is just the current flavor of the week. You know, like, and it's going to be like in, in a few more years, it's, it's going to be someone else that comes on in and has the same exact message. It's gonna, so it's going to be, it's the same thing over and over again of you can do it. And it's the part that's, that's dangerous to me about this is that again, like, like we were talking about before we turn the cameras on is their message yeah. is extremely dangerous because it's incomplete. And the part that's incomplete is it's all mental. And I get it. Like your mentality is tremendously important. It all starts in here. But the problem with these guys is that's also where it stops when in reality, this is just a starting point. They almost never give out like hard skills. If they have to sell their courses and I've signed up for a course or two in my life back when I was, you know, a little bit mm -hmm. more impressionable and there's never ever any real substance in any of these courses. Yeah. And that's the part that's concerning to me. And it's good that he's motivating people, motivating young men, women, whatever to like step up and claim responsibility. But if all you're doing is feeding people, mental feel goods how you know without giving them any true substance of how to actually succeed by developing hard skills how's that any different from giving someone a drug that makes them feel good for about 45 minutes and then the drug wears off and they're like all right yeah. now yeah. that the high is gone what do i have and that's my biggest concern with not just andrew tape but this the entire uh, industry that surrounds their these types of personas See, where I think Andrew Tate really like blew up last year was the whole red pill thing was like blowing up. And that was due to, you know, the Kevin Samuels of the world and stuff like this. And truth be told for me, I know Andrew Tate name was out there, but it seemed like when Kevin Samuels passed, that's when he really blew up because Kevin Samuels was basically like telling modern women how it is. Mm -hmm. And Andrew Tate was like the next person who had that kind of vibe where he's going to tell you like it is and don't care, so to speak. Because I the, la the last um, content I listened to him with was with him and Pearly Things. And it was actually a great video. And when you listen to the stuff that he was saying, depicting between modern women and men, whatever, 
some like a lot of stuff he was saying, you're like, well, damn, yeah, I could see where the disconnect between men and women are. So I think his claim to fame that really blew him up within the last year, because that's when he had his f- rise to fame, was when he started attacking the red pill, blue pill content. Not attacking, but like speaking on those things. So listening to those things, I'm like, yo, dude has a good point on some a lot of the points that he make. As far as like his, you know, hey, courses of this is how you do it, motivated, this, that, and the third, I listen to it, but I'm like, mm, it doesn't move me, so to speak. But mm-hmm. I get it. You get some people who want to hear that. So that's why I believe you have he have a lot of followers. And as you heard the kids saying, you know, he's motivating and yada, yada. Aside from us, you know, giving our point of views on Andrew Tate and everything like that, the question is, did this man basically build uh, insurmountable evidence towards himself? Because as we all know with the, what is it, um, Young Thug case and everything like that, all the snitching with Gunna and everything like that, this dude pretty much seems as if he snitched on himself. So... We're going to play some content from his courses that teach people how to do the business that he was in or whatever. And we're going to see if these things are incriminating or are they not incriminating. So y'all ready to get into this? Let's go. Fire right. it up. All right. All right. Now, I apologize. I, I've seen this lawyer on multiple occasions but i don't know his name but he gave a great analysis of the three main things that is required for this kidnapping case or kidnapping charge that he's facing i know it's not kidnapping but you get what i'm saying Mm -hmm. so here are the three things that this gentleman said that are required in the court case that he's going to be facing trafficking we have three things force fraud or coercion force obviously that's like being in chains and you know not being allowed to leave fraud being kept there under false pretenses if there's an element of fraud in the way that you are enticing somebody or keeping somebody in a particular position to work for you and if it's in the sex business that's sex trafficking or coercion let's kind of look at one of his very first videos that he did these are his words not my word and that's exactly ladies and gentlemen what we're about to do get into the video of what he said when you say webcam company people assume oh it's just a sex fest but in reality it's a shitload of people management the hr category of the webcam business is is the largest and most important thing you're effectively taking girls teaching them how to make unlimited money from home and then making sure they give it all to you your goal is to inspire a girl to make money. So the way you're gonna do that is, you have to have some element of influence and you're gonna have that element of influence through her respecting you, looking up to you and her believing she needs you. And this is extremely important because at the beginning she will need you, but then she won't need you. But you have to keep that fallacy, keep that dream alive. Fallacy, that's his word. And what is fallacy? Fraud. So let's dissect this. Because from listening to that, that basically just tells me pimp game. <laughs> In a nutshell, you're basically pimping this, these women, starting them up or whatever, make them think that they feel that they need you, yada, yada, and basically lie to them by any means necessary to make sure that you got them right where you want them. What's your take, Erica P? I was going to say something pretty similar. So I don't know how much of a lie or the truth you need to tell somebody sometimes, because if you got the gifts of gab, you might not have to stretch the truth that often. You also, depending on the person, you got to look at what their incentive is. The biggest thing is them making money. A lot of times if they went over to a person that's in that industry, one of two ways, you either got coerced into it or you were a willing participant one way or another because obviously if you know the name and you knew the person you knew what kind of business he was in already so if you hey we're talking we're dating maybe but if it's hey i I got this business you can make some money a lot of times it's 
you want to go into that, but do you have the capital to do it? Do you have a camera? Do you have all of the equipment that you need to do this stuff? Here's my question for you, though. Is that enough to say that this is trafficking or to convict them on trafficking? It's not enough to say that it's trafficking if they're not out there doing something else. And I think that's the other thing. Is he taking their passport? Is he bringing them to places and just leaving them there? Though that that's a touchy subject. Because hey, if I'm dating you and we get into an argument, and I tell you, you go ahead and leave. That's not trafficking if I tell you to leave. But on the flip side is, if I took all of your resources and tell you to leave, that potentially could be trafficking. Because if you don't have your own money because you're dependent on me. You don't have your own means to leave, meaning maybe you don't drive. Maybe you don't have the money to go get that plane ticket or that cab fare or Uber in in, in the cases of nowadays. If you don't have that, then you're almost trafficked. Am I? Is he sending you on dates with somebody else? Because guess but, what? That's trafficking at that point. But here's the thing. he He eloquently said... They don't need you, but you got to give them the sense that they need you. That was one of the main things he said. So you can't be in a sense of say, of like taking their resources or anything like that, because at the end of the day, they don't really need you, but you got to make them feel as though they need you. That's what he said. Correct. I mean, that, I mean, I mean, that's no go different. Ahead, Rex. So, sorry. sorry. Um, go ahead. I go mean, ahead, Rex. <laughs> you could chime in. <laughs> I mean, that's no different than, um, let's say you own a, say you own a car dealership and you have, and you hire salesmen to help you sell cars. Yeah. And, you know, you ha- say you hire someone off the street from McDonald's who made, who's used to making 10 bucks an hour. Suddenly they're making a hundred grand. They can hit a point where they actually don't need you to sell cars anymore. They can apply to get their own broker's license and start selling cars on, on their own. Well, guess what? you know, like at me as a business owner who owns, owns that car dealership, it's in my business best interest to keep good strong salesmen around me so i'm gonna tell them hey you know you can go out and do all that you know but that's a lot of money you know that's a lot of upfront cost i already have a system in place that you can come here you don't have to worry about management inventory management you don't have to worry about taxes you don't have to worry about Mm -hmm. business uh, insurance any of that crap all you got to do is pick up that phone sell sell some other uh some mf and cars (laughs) (laughs) so um you know you know and you know and do your thing. I look at it as the same exact thing. And like Erica was saying, like, do, do, do they have a choice? You know, be, uh, my car salesman, they have a choice of either going out on their own and potentially 10 xing their income, but that's hard. Or I can stay right where I am and keep making a hundred grand while it's not a million dollars. It's still a very good living. These women that Andrew Tate are, you know, employing, whether it's contractual W2 or whatever, or, or however it works in, in Europe, do they have a choice in the matter? Like, uh, can they get up and leave and get a new job whenever they want? Is you know, uh, is he is he holding a, a proverbial gun to the head and keeping them there? I um, mean, every interview I've ever seen with him, that answer is no. They always have a choice to leave. We're gonna get into that because there were some transcripts and stuff like this also. So okay, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. All right, we'll move to the um, next video. I knew some street pimps. I've known them for a long time. Straight street pimping is a completely, in fact, no, it's not a completely different game. The psychological aspect is the same. She can't do this without you to ensure that she doesn't do it without you. At the beginning, she can, but there'll become a point she can. But you being here, it synergizes this teamwork energy. We're gonna do this together. Yeah, you go on the camera, don't worry, I'll talk to the guys, I'm gonna to talk to them. We're a team, a happy, positive teamwork. There's no negative energy in this business. You have to be positive. So by you typing for the girl, you maximize your money, and also she believes she needs you, which is extremely important. Another reason you use Shadowbait is because you, they will pay you in Bitcoin. And this is amazing because the you've all seen the thought audit shit that's going on, you've all seen the legalities of banking trying to get money out of these sites into your bank without paying a lot of tax is actually very difficult see it's that that whole avoiding taxes and, and it's not legal to do that this is the part where in that live that we did when we said andrew tate you know he's arrested or whatever and they got him on the trafficking but now that they got his computer and everything 
they're going to comb, they're, like, they're going to take that fine tooth comb and see what they can get. So even if we can't get you for the trafficking, let's see what else we could find mm-hmm. that we can get you. This right here, I think, is very incriminating because now he's talking about Bitcoin and how to, in a nutshell, avoid taxes. In my opinion, that's going to be a very uphill battle. But Erica, you went first. I'll let Rex Wu, you can give your take on it. <laughs> and uh, I will give Erica the permission to cut me off rudely whenever she chooses to. Yeah. Much like um, <laughs> random guy to the last round. Yeah. <laughs> and I apologize for that. You hear that, Erica? Yeah. You got it's the okay. green light. Because I find that I do that sometimes too. So you okay. <laughs> yeah, she's the queen of that. So you don't got to worry about that, brother. <laughs> No. All right. So, I mean, uh, I'm not entirely familiar with the entire story, the entire narrative going on, but it looks, but it sounds to me like the sex trafficking part isn't sticking. So now they're looking for other things to try to pin him on. Um, and they're going to, and they're going to find something on him because what every, there's like a million laws out there that exist. And every single one of us break about 50 laws by the time we get to work, you know, whether we're aware of it or not, you know, if you drove one mile above the speed limit, you broke the law technically. Um, and every single one of us does that. So they're going to find something on him. It's just a matter of how, how what they're going to find. And as far as like the uh, tax avoidance thing, that's going to be extremely, extremely tough because of the nature of cryptocurrency and how Bitcoin works and the lack of regulations that exist surrounding Bitcoin, especially here in the Western world. Because cryptocurrency, while he was doing his thing back in the uh, 20, uh, 2010 to 2020 era, Bitcoin wasn't really classified as a taxable item. It was just something that that had a store of value. But as far as the IRS and most countries' tax codes were concerned, they didn't have any rules of engagement surrounding cryptocurrency. So it was, it, so it's not illegal if it does if it doesn't actually if there's no actual IRS code surrounding it. It's only in the, these last few years did the IRS start to create some sort of a uh, rules of engagement surrounding cryptocurrency. Mm-hmm. So during those times, he acted while he was technically avoiding taxes, he did it in a technically legal way because there's no lo- there was no law that said that uh, through an exchange of cryptocurrency, a taxable event occurred. You know, a taxable event is anytime there's an exchange for a good and services using legal tender. Bitcoin was never legal tender. It's only recently that it's in certain countries, which Romania isn't one of them, that Bitcoin became legal tender. So they can try to get him on that, but I. But back then, there's no, uh, there was no rule, rules against it. Bitcoin was the wild, wild, wild west. It still essentially is. So if they try to get him for tax evasion on Bitcoin, I don't see how how they can do that, honestly. Well, and I was going to say about the same when it came to that aspect of it, because you're right, they're really, you know, all of the stuff that's coming out has been within the last four or five years. Mm -hmm. And it's only really happened because there was so many other events that were triggering it. You think about it. I, I, my background was banking. So because my background was banking, There was no real way for you to translate your Bitcoin into money without going into an intermediary. So it's Mm -hmm. like, hey, I got $5 million in Bitcoin, but guess what? If you didn't go to somebody to cash it out as a broker, and and then even with that, the exchange rate was never the same. Mm -hmm. It was whatever the market value is at that point in time. So you you never know. So it's like, okay, you, you see the inconsistency with that. But then it's like, hey, once you start talking that, but you're not telling people that aspect either. It's like, hey, when you look at those videos, you don't know if that video was a year ago, if that video was 12 years ago when it was at its prime. So people that are coming new to the situation don't know that they're about to get hemmed up with some of these new laws, especially if they're only listening to his words for face value and not really doing the research that goes into learning about those aspects too. The way you guys broke down the whole Bitcoin and you know avoiding the taxes and everything like that, that was well said. But this next video, this is where things get dicey. Spicy. Check it out. Bring it on. So in the last six months, chat rate have released a Bitcoin option. So they'll pay you in Bitcoin. Tax is also another important element for controlling your woman. 
you're not going to pay anybody tax because you're getting paid in Bitcoin. So you don't need to pay tax to anybody. Tell your girl that you're paying the tax because girls are lazy and girls are stupid and girls don't understand how taxes work. So the girl's working with you and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, we've made this much money, but I'm going to pay the tax to make sure we don't get in trouble. She'll sit there and go, okay, okay. Now that allows you to do two things. One, it's another control element. If I work with him, my tax is not a problem. If I do it alone, I have to deal with taxes. Taxes are complicated. It allows you to pay her a smaller percentage. So I used to pay my girls 30%. So for every $10,000 they made, I'd give them three and I'd keep seven. They thought they were on 50%. And I said that the disparity is because of taxes. So you're on 50%, we get to pay the tax first and then it's 50-50. So really you're paying 30, you tell them you're paying 50. The difference is in the tax. That's where the disparity lies, taxes. If, you, if they don't believe you or they want to get fresh or whatever, print out some tax forms. I see this all the time. I used to print out some random tax forms and say, yeah, sign here and sign this. What is it? It's for the tax. You want to pay the tax or not? Ooh, okay. And they just sign away. I don't know what the f*** is signing. I'll throw them away afterwards. But they, they think something's happening. Something real is happening. Nothing's happening. So let me get rich, bitch. Okay. So, that like I said, mm. this one... Because think about it. I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen, but if I'm missing one hour from my check, <laughs> I'm ready to go postal with HR. Mm -hmm. This is thousands. So, yeah. You avoided the taxes, yes, you know, for the women that you're employing, but now you're committing fraud as far as the payments and compensation that they should receive. And you're literally lying and giving them false documents to back up said claim. So Erica P, let's hear your take on this one. So that's the problem that I have. You have to think about it. I study business in college. That's what my degree is in. So you've obviously found women who don't know about the business that they didn't went into one who aren't. And I'm not going to say not smart enough because that's not usually the case, but what happens is they don't know. And when you don't know, that's how you get people that take advantage of you. Because my thing is you signed the papers without reading them. That's, that's a, that's a problem on your end because you should not just be blindly signing papers for somebody. But these Two, are tax forms. It doesn't matter, though, because my okay. thing is you have to read the top of the forms to figure out what you're signing. The second thing is, for me, how are you only paying them 13%? That is a usury rate, if you think about it. Let me, um, let me um, chime in for a bit, because... I understand the point that you made that you got to understand what you're signing, so to speak. But if you literally just confessed that you're lying to them and you're using this as a means to jip them, so to speak, it doesn't matter what that person signed. You literally confessed that you're screwing the person over. But okay <laughs> but you also have to think about it the person that's getting screwed over has to be the one to bring this up so if they don't know that they're being screwed over and you can't prove it one way or another guess what even if they took him to court you might not have the information to prove it because if you're giving him the documents back how many times do people really photocopy what they give to people so that's one so thing that the girls may not have done. So here's a question I got to ask. Now, I understand Romania is different than the U.S., but I've heard numerous cases where companies were screwing customers over, right? And then they went to court, and that's when they got to pay out $5, $10 million, whatever, because they were screwing customers over. That's when you wind up getting a letter from AT&T or Verizon or something saying, hey, here's a check for XYZ. Or if you had our service between this year and that year, make your claim, right? Like fill out this document so that you can get a claim and receive your money, so to speak. Now, I know that, like I said, the laws are different in Romania, 
But you're telling me if the person don't know they're getting screwed, but the courts find out you were screwing people over, there's no trouble that you could get into? There may not be. And the reason is you have to think about it. In your example, those were big name companies that were publicly <coughs> traded companies that are governed by the SEC and all of the other organizations that govern them. Gotcha. So because of that, th you have to play fair. There's rules to protect the consumer and the business itself. Think about it. Some of these big companies, you can't be a monopoly. So you have to break up. So like you said, the rules are completely different, but there are rules in place for companies in the States that they have to buy by him on the opposite hand. It's a little different because think about the business that he was in. There really was nobody watching those kind of businesses like that because they were technically not on the up and up. You knew those types of companies were not on the up and up because you had to sneak to use them in certain countries. Okay. You're not going to go and utilize an 18 and over site in broad daylight <laughs> with people around you. You're doing that in the comfort of your own home behind closed doors. And you're not going to make it publicly known. So for the people that were in that industry that got screwed over by him, guess what? They're going to take it as a loss and they're going to move on to their next venture. Because a lot of times it costs them more money to fight their employer than to sever ties and move on to the next employer or go start up their own thing after you don't learn the business. Pretty much everything Erica said, like right on the money, um, like th th there's rules and regulations surrounding Capital One, TD Bank, on, and how they conduct their business. And if they violate something as, as far as the FINRA rules, the IRS, you know, like, you know, the, the government comes down on them bunch of half naked girls sitting in front of a camera I, I i don't know about romania but at least here in the states i'm very confident that there aren't any rules of engagement surrounding that type of work um at all which now that i think about it is kind of interesting <laughs> um <laughs> and, and, and and the most important thing is regardless of what he says on camera like that's anecdotal evidence that has very very little weight in the in the court of law what we need is actual evidence. Did these girls like, did they sign any contracts that said, Hey, I will receive X percentage of the total amount that my video, this video generates. And if there is a disconnect there and the amount of money slash Bitcoin that transferred into those girls accounts, then we have a case for like for fraud. But if, uh, but just cause he says like, you know, like, Hey, I, I didn't, I'm, you, you pay these girls X amount. Like that's, that's hardly evidence. Um, so at the end of the day, like, what's, what does the document say? What does the record say? Do, do his computer show that there was a disconnect with any contract that these girls may may or may not have signed? I'm not talking about the tax forms. I'm saying like, hey, I agree to work for uh, the Tate Corporation. And again, did, uh, was he speaking on behalf of Andrew Tate or Tate Videos LLC, whatever, the, you know, whatever that organization is called? Because depending on on how he was acting and who these girls signed a contract with is going to matter tremendously if they're going to be fighting for a fraud case or not um and let's, and like she unless she said there's not really any rules in place surrounding the sex industry that's what this that that is at the end of the day it's the sex industry so here's the question i have so far what we've seen does any of this show any type of force, fraud, or coercion? Mm -mm. None to ya? Okay. Shows, shows oh, lack of nothing. values. Shows lack of All values, right. if anything. All right. Or, What's I'm going to say this. I feel like you got the gift of gab, and you got somebody running their mouth, and depending on how the question was worded, you may have a snippet of what the full conversation was. So I think that's more of where I'm at with it. Yes. Does it look bad when you start showing those clips? Of course it does. If oh. somebody's sitting, if I'm sitting on the jury, I'm I'm really looking at your words like, yo, this dude really think he could get away with some stuff. 
But on the flip side is I have to see all of the facts too. But this is like I, like I said, the reason why I'm showing all this stuff is because there's other stuff coming up that I want you guys to go back in full circle and then tell me, does all of this line up in a pretty package for the courts? Okay. Let's continue right. to the next video. Uh, you're always working. Why don't you work for me so we spend more time together? Work for you doing what? So I'll have a webcam business. Oh, I don't want to do that. So, okay, I know you don't want to do that, but listen, come, let's have a meeting. Let's just talk about it. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. Fine. But let me explain it to you properly. In fact, I'll bring one of the girls who works for me. You, your bought my bitch, the new girl, you go out for a nice dinner. Your bought my bitch is the one who does the selling. You don't do the selling. The girl has to hear from a girl. And this is why your bought has to be trained. That's why I said it's so important to have a good first girl. Remember Glenn Maxwell? That was the girl that recruited for Jeffrey Epstein. Almost identical to what he's talking about. Do y'all agree that that's almost exactly identical to the that type of recruiting? But that's usually what happens. Think about it. That's in any in industry, though. Yeah. Think about pharmaceuticals. When you start looking at the pharmaceutical reps, the beginning ones are usually the rah-rah cheerleaders. You're getting them first because those are the ones who are going to peddle the pharmaceutical drugs, the higher end ones. You'll get somebody that look like me who you might get in the middle of the road. They built their relationships with those doctors. No, I, you, I, I get that. I get that. You're talking, you know, medical. We're no, no, talking but about, a, it, but, but the point I'm trying to make is we're talking about a guy that's basically arrested saying that he's trafficking and holding women hostage so to speak. And now he's basically saying, this is how I recruit the girl, so to speak. And it lines up similar to other cases of people that were convicted of doing these type of things. Correct. But that's what I was going to say. It's the same kind of recruitment, though. So every industry has that type of recruitment when they're bringing people in. Pharmaceuticals do it. You're talking, even when you start looking at... um, your car salesman people. Think about it. They'll have your manly man, the nice, the fit for certain brand cars. They'll have your girls that are there. They're a little step above pretty sometimes to be there, but those are your high sellers when you're talking your medium to large range cars. When you start looking at your sedans that you got to sell to people. You're going to have to have somebody that's going to be relatable to me when I start looking for that mom bill. So like you, you, but you have that type of same mentality. You have to have a mixed crowd when you go out and recruit. They do that with high-end jobs. They're not always picking people that went to that state school. They want the top recruiters. So because you want that top recruiter, you going to make sure that you put somebody that's out there that can relate to those people, especially somebody one is going to have the gift to get, because like he said, he can't tell the girls what they have to go through. You have to have a girl to be able to do it for him. And it has to be somebody who's very convincing, but not going to be a pushover either. Okay. Because if I'm like, I got any doubt, I'm walking away. You mm-hmm. want that girl to clear up any doubt and bring you on into the fold. But think about it. That's like any high-end dancer. When they go to these high-end clubs, you start looking at show. What's the what's the big one in New York? I can't even, I'm drawing a blank right now. But the one that um, Joe Buttons was talking about on his podcast. Like when you start looking at them, they have that look. You already know your look is going to fit this look. They already, you didn't already put your fillers out there. So you already go, all right, she going to fit in. This is what we're looking for. All right, I'm going to go get somebody that's going to come talk to her and bring her on in. That's what they're going to do. But when you get to that point, it's like, okay, you got her, but how do you keep her? So you looking for the ones that the motivation is not always just the money sometimes. Mm-hmm. You're looking for them where they're just a little bit broken. And I'm not saying it to be mean, but you look at it that way. You got to think of the mindset, though. You have to be able to kind of control them just a little bit. You want them to have their own mind, but you also want to selectively put other information in so you could have them 
where you want them sometimes. And that's hard because it's like, at what point does that needle flip? If I be real suggestive and be like, hey, I want you to go and maybe you got your own set of guidelines to be like, hey, I only want to do videos with girls. Well, guess what? Maybe you got some people that's going, we want her with maybe this type of guy and this type of girl. You're going to have to figure out who going to talk to her to try to get her to switch up her genre. If you can't do it, being a guy, you have to be able to talk that female into, hey, I'm going to come do this video with you. If I do this video with you, is that going to calm you down to be able to go ahead and get this done? So is Anything it you want to add to it, Rex? I mean, again, Erica, uh, first off, I want to just point out that Erica said mom mobile, and that's like the greatest <laughs> word I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a matter of time before it enters the common discourse of the American language, mom mobile. Y'all heard it here first. <laughs> um, all right. But uh, joking aside, um, no, I mean, Erica pretty much nailed it. Um, I, I, I've worked in high ticket sales before. I've sold cars. I've sold, uh, I sold financial products. And I've had to, I've wine and dined some of my clients. Like I've taken them out like, hey, you know, like let's meet. And then I'm pur I'm purposely taking them to a steakhouse, you know, and I'm making sure like they get picked up at their front door with a valet because I want them to be like, whoa, this is really cool, you know, and I'm and I'm trying to blow them out the water just so I can close a sale and you know and take home a nice fat paycheck. And what to Andrew's doing, like he's he's a very good salesman. That's that's been his uh that's been his the whole reason that he's been successful is that he knows exactly what he needs to say how to present himself to win you know all these business uh, transactions he sells a dream to these girls it's no different from a recruiter hey come work at my company we have uh we have amazing benefits health care your whole family is going to be taken care of you're going to have a real and nice salary i see you rolled up in a four pinto guess what here's the keys to a beamer boom all yours mm -hmm. and they're going to sell them into it I'm I'm not going to tell them. Oh, by the way, you're going to be in this office for 85 hours a week. You're going to miss holidays. You're going to miss your kids' school plays. I'm not going to tell them that. You know, I, uh, they're going to find that out the hard way when they get in. Is that my fault, or is or because the way I, the way I'm looking at it is, I'm presenting you with an opportunity, and it's up to up to you to do the research of whether you want this or not. Some people are jumping in. They know exactly what they're getting into. I mean. I mean, women aren't stupid. They know, like, hey, working for a camp, uh, camp business, I may not want this, but hey, if uh, if the benefits are good enough, I may sacrifice on a few things to get the things that I want. If it means more money, more freedom, less stress in my life, all I got to do is sit in front of a camera in a bikini and and guys throw money at me. Hell yeah, you know, some, some girls are okay with that. Um, yeah. So uh, I still don't see anywhere where, uh, I mean, again, Everything you showed me is definitely, it's more character assassination than anything incriminating. And unfortunately, to convict most people, no, no, to convict people in people's minds, you assassinate their character first, and then you give, and then you give them the, uh, the actual evidence. And so far, everything that I'm seeing so far is exactly that. Very little illegal stuff is happening as far as I'm aware, and I'm not, I'm hardly a legal expert, by the way. Um... But it's a ton, a ton, a ton of character assassination. And, and it's easy to get lost by character assassination in these types of conversations. And, I'm, and, it's, and I, we, we have to be very careful about how we proceed, especially when it comes to situations like this. Yes. So, and I think the biggest thing for me is, it's like, hey, this is what is happening right now. You're going to find all of the clips that are going to be the most damning information for him. And you're going to string it together because that's what you, at this point, it's like, Hey, you're already locked up. They already have access to your stuff. So people are going to be looking to see, okay, what are we going to have to stick? We're going to look at your character and obviously your character is a little sketchy. So because mm -hmm. your character is a little sketchy, that's going to be the biggest thing. Think about well, it when they start doing one thing, one thing to point out was in the Ro Romanian courts, they did say 
because they the a defense they tried to make was the person that you saw in the clips whatever is like a char- character but they said the person that they saw on camera is identical to the person he is away from the camera so it can in fact be used against you that what that, what you're portraying on camera is the same way you are in a person you're one and the same so it's not like sylvester salone is acting like rocky as a boxer and then in his real life he does nothing to per, per, like pertaining him acting like a boxer or whatever the case may be they're saying that they're one and the same so this can in fact be used against you as character assassination though not as actual evidence of any wrong thing yeah, well, someone, someone can have really shitty character, but never break a law. They just do very like unscrupulous things. So, but this is the thing: we're gonna get into the transcripts that they pulled from his computer. Okay, now we're so, talking. All right, then yeah. go ahead. Let, let's move on. Let's let's see what now, what, what other information I don't you have I don't have. have all of the transcripts because it's like these things are like hard to find, but. Here's one of the transcripts from your man's computer. This was a conversation that he was having with one of the victims, which said, Andrew Tate, Andrew Tate said, you're not stupid and you can probably guess how I make so much money. I have to hide what I'm really doing. And she, the victim is like webcam. I've been doing this for a long time with a team of girls working on video chat. The company is fake, but this is how I laundered my dirty money. Some of the girls who worked for me, I used them to do other things, to move money or illegal things, documents, etc. I will never do that with you. That's one transcript pulled from his computer. That's a little different because- Another one, another one. Wait, let me show- Another one is Andrew Tate's Angels, which are the two women who got arrested, which is Luna Radio and Georgiana Nagu. Georgiana Nagu and Luana Luana Radu. Yeah, Radu. So those are those were the two people that he had in there. Tate's Angels, the two women. Arrested along with Tate make violent threats, including death threats to one of the victims saying that if she does not post pornographic content to OnlyFans slash TikTok, she will be thrown off the back in balcony by Andrew Tate. Another transcript. Andrew Tate manipulates one of his victims into flying to Romania by promising marriage and discusses said victim as a commodity to be used for money making. This one, I don't think is as much as incriminating because it's a conversation of him like luring the woman over to get married. One of his aliases was Amari Andrew Tate. You have to understand that once you're mine, you'll be mine forever. A woman never leaves her man. I will be the last man in your life. Um, What do we do if we fall in love and I kidnap you, bring you back to Budapest? Girl, I don't think it's kidnapping. I want to come. First, I have to see see in your eyes that you will never be able to live without me and that I can trust you to show you everything. She says, bring a ring with you when you come. He says, can you be loving enough to be a wife, to always be by my side wherever I go, Take talk to zero men besides me, ride or die. You have to move to Romania with me to keep an eye on you, your mind. Don't forget that and, and act like it. We will be together soon, but can I trust you? Yes, you can. You will move to Romania with me. I plan when I, I plan when I get there first. I might have to go to. Well, I don't know what that Proc. is. Do y'all know what Proc. that is? Proc. Proc. Oh, okay, <laughs> Proc for a few days, and we meet in Romania. And I want to know that you are committed, serious about marriage. Yes, I am. And what they're saying is, I don't have the rest of the transcript. That was a girl that he lord n through marriage and basically made her a cam girl so basically all those things in a fold with the stuff that he was saying on camera the prosecutor is trying to make make a case that all of these fall hand in hand you basically showed how to get these women and this is how you're basically putting your plan into action with the transcripts that we found on your computer so do they have a case in your opinion? So my question is, so so we have transcripts of things that were said. What was actually done? He says, as far as he, what? 
everything. So, so we'll start with the first part that I circled. He says, this is how I launder the money. Mm -hmm. How did he actually launder the money? What is the evidence? What did he actually do to launder the money? Because there's, because I've studied money laundering and it is difficult, but there's, there's, there's a couple ways to do it. And every single way it leaves evidence. If you could find that evidence of that money laundering, for example, like one thing, one way is to uh, make friends with someone who's a, uh, fi- find someone who's close to you, who's very close to death, have them take out a life insurance policy for like five, for like five million dollars, and you take your five million dollars, send it to be clean, pay for it right then and there, wait for them to pass within six months, boom, you get your five million dollars right then and there, all clean. There's evidence there. Um, for the record, people don't do that. You will get caught. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I told you I used to work in banking. People yeah. used to money launder through the credit. Remember the, um, this is before now where you can just do cash advances through the computer. But mm-hmm. I remember those checks. We used to send out the checks in the credit card statements years ago. Mm-hmm. People would money launder with those. They would write the check out for a dollar amount knowing it was, you know, going to be bogus. They were going to change it out. They'd wash the checks. Like these are Mm -hmm. things that people are talking about now. We're washing the checks, but they would be legit checks. And then they would change the zeros on them. They change signatures. So I know these are things that are coming out now, but these are things that they would money launder through people having 100, 200, you know, the, the black cards with unlimited, they would take the money out from the credit card. It's like, Hey, you had it on a credit card statement and then you send it right back a few days later. It's like, oh, I, I just needed it to purchase a car real fast. You're not getting any interest on the money. You're paying it right back, but you're paying it back with dirty money. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I can remember that, but it's still a paper trail because you physically had to put it on somebody's card. You had it on somebody's social security number to open up that account. Unless you were doing it bogusly. They were doing that too, where you were utilizing deceased people to open up accounts. Yeah. to move money around. So, so, so which so, goes back to the question is how did he loan her the money? That's what I, that's what we need to know. Um, you know, as far as like, and, and then with the girls, what happened, you know, once the girls got there, we know what, uh, what actually happened? When did they get there? How long was, uh, did they talk before the girl actually went there? Is there any, what are the other conversations? Because yeah, that definitely looked really bad. It's looked classic sociopathic manipulative behavior um things that like a lot of jerk men have done to women in the past but what's said and what's done there needs to be a connection there so what was actually the, done the only con- well you're right it's a lot of like basically confessing things but it's like you're confessing to actually what there's nothing concrete that you're confessing to yeah but for me to just blindly say, hey, this won't hold up in court, I don't know. I, I can't really I can't really say that because we've seen bogus cases. And like I said, this is Romania and America is different. We've yeah. seen bogus cases where it's like, dude, how did this how did you get a guilty verdict with so much like evidence that isn't concrete, so to speak? It's like they're I don't see how by reasonable doubt, like um, without reasonable doubt that this person was guilty, so to speak. So that's why I'm like, yes, there's nothing concrete, but I can't just blindly shove it to the side. So this last video right here, no matter what they, I wouldn't say whatever, no matter what they find, but as far as the sex trafficking goes, I believe this video right here will usurp the whole sex trafficking where I don't believe that they can charge him whatsoever. First of all, I would like to start by saying that there are no victims in this case. It all started April last year in 2022 when two girls that lived in my home with me locked themselves in their room and claimed to be held their hostage. But here's the facts. When the authorities and the police broke into their room, raided our homes, they forgot to mention something really important, and that's that the key was in their room, on their bed. Now, I don't think it's just the victims lying anymore, it's the police as well. There is a reason why they don't want to put that certain 
detail in the files and it's pretty obvious. This is all about some election in 2024 and the vacant spot for the decode leadership that the prosecutor wants. The police know that there was no crime and they are holding the Tate brothers locked with no evidence because they think it's good for Romanian politics. That right there can basically make them not get charged for trafficking. The reason being is because if you have somebody that, if you have people listed like if you have her listed as basically a person that was one of Tate's victims, so to speak, and they come out and say, this was not a trafficking case, we was not held against our will, that kind of like shatters your case completely. Is that actually how it works though? Because if that's actually how it works, that leaves so much room, a tremendous amount of room for exploitation because all i gotta do like say uh say i'm a i'm a high up in a mafia family and i commit a crime all i gotta do is pay, tell someone hey just walk in the middle of the courtroom and say you did it and i'm and me and my cronies are gonna get off scot-free like like i i, I yo check I, this I, out i can't imagine that that's actually check this how out. it works check this out it happens though check this out check this out um i may be a little that? naive ti T.I. just literally came out and said him and his cousin got into a pinch, right? Mm -hmm. The cousin literally was like, yo, I'm going to confess to this and you just go along with it no matter what the evidence was against them. He said, I'm going to take it and you just say, yo, that's all him. That's all it took. T.I. went scot-free. His cousin did the, did the time because he was like, yo, since you're rich, whatever, you're living your best life. You going out there, you're able to take care of me, whatever, you know, keep my cop, like all of that stuff, because he have a name for himself. I would say and it that's has what to, happened. I would say it has to depend on what the crime is. If we're talking about like petty crime, yeah, as a court, I just want to bust somebody, just look good. But if we're talking something as serious as like human sex trafficking and tax fraud and all this other things, like it's going to take yes, a if, little bit more than, than a, if random a person, girl on a random if a video. Per because you know why, you know why. Because once the person con like confesses and say, hey, this is all me, mm -hmm. that's a slam and shut case. That's less money that they got to spend on the case going through trial and all of that stuff. It's a slam. It's about percentages. So if they're like, hey, we could close this, sh this case shut. As long as these, you come in and be like, yo, I did this. Here's the gun I used. Here's where the gun is located or whatever the case may be. It's a sl open and shut case. That's why you see like a lot of like lower like lower tier guys wind up taking the raps for bosses when it comes to like crime mafias and all this stuff like this. If there's like evidence where it's like there's gray areas where this person might can possibly walk, oh hell yeah, they're gonna take <laughs> that confession like because it's a slam dunk case. So mm. yeah, um, but yeah, with this woman saying that she's a victim. Well, with, with it being reported that this woman was reported a victim and she comes out and say, I wasn't held against my will. This was not trafficking. And if they can't get any of the other girls to come out and say, hey, we were trafficked, she's going to win because she was, quote unquote, a victim. Mm -hmm. And at that point, there's nothing you could do about it because now you can't get nobody else to come forward and say, hey, he was trafficking me. So unless they can get other girls to come forward and say, hey, he was tra trafficking me, if that girl goes to court and say they can't get him on the trafficking. So I, I would say like uh, the bigger thing that we're missing here is that the evidence, like there has to be evidence that he was actually uh, traffic, uh, doing human trafficking before. And I've studied human trafficking in college actually for a semester. Um, just, you know, I did a whole paper on it and there's a series of events that need to happen in, for something uh, that every single human trafficker, sex trafficker has. You know, there's always a ledger of every single person, where they came from, where they ended up, and the people that uh, that are involved along the way. And when the, pe when the people are taken, when the, when the kids, the women, when they're taken and kidnapped, they're not kept inside a house. They're kept inside like, uh, they're, uh, they're kept inside like a storage room somewhere they're not kept in a place where people can come across them easily if they are they're usually in like a basement somewhere their cell phones are taken their computers are taken their ids are taken and their names are taken like 
the people that kidnap them, they say one of the first things they do is they go, you, you're not Diana anymore. Your name is Apple. If anybody asks, your name is Apple. And, and, and like nobody knows you anymore. Nobody knows who Diana is. Like they completely like psychologically manipulate them and torture them. They're not giving them like, hey, you know, come work with me and then, uh, you know, I'm, and, and I'll give you the world and dreams. It's actually the opposite. It, it's, it's, you don't have a choice. You're coming to work with me because you've got nothing else. And they destroy them from the get go. So this is, what, this is what I will, just, this is what I will say to answer um, those questions. Okay. R. Kelly kept his victims. I'm sorry, you kind of broke up there. He said again. R. Kelly kept his victims in the house. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And he got convicted for basically keeping women against their will. I don't know if it was like sex trafficking or whatever, but basically keeping women against their will and psychologically messing with their mentality. Yeah, he he got convicted. He got convicted for for kidnapping. He didn't get convicted for human trafficking. Human trafficking yeah. is like a whole organized crime. That is but way see, different. I think but I think they're making it human trafficking because of the whole webcam and the whole selling of SE like you get what I'm saying? So I think mm-hmm. that's why they're labeling it human trafficking so to speak cuz it was basically them doing like a whole webcam like sex 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 um webcaming via sex or whatever. So that's why I think they labeled it as human trafficking, so to speak. Yeah. I don't think he was sending the girls out to actually sleep with the men and whatever, because, because he said, yo, they talk to the men on webcam and they type, you know, back and forth messages. So mm-hmm. since some type of sex is involved, like even if it's like phone sex operator or something like that, they're still going to put it as label it as sex trafficking because there's some type of sexual, um, not desire. Yeah, but some kind like some kind of sexual experience within it, so to speak. But the thing I'm getting at though is the most of the biggest thing, and as far as human trafficking, is the stripping of their identity. As oh far yeah. As, as far as I'm aware, every single one of these women were allowed to keep their original identity. I don't know that. I don't know that they got their passports taken away. I don't know they got they got their IDs taken away, their names taken away. I don't know that any of that happened. If it did, you yeah. know, like you know. I, uh, I haven't heard of it. It could have happened. Yeah. I don't know, but I don't know. I haven't seen that it's happened at all. So no, I get that. I get that. That is yeah. very. That is very, that is very true. And I agree with you one hundred percent. But that's what they're saying. <laughs> that's what they're saying. <laughs> that's what they're labeling it as, or whatever. We don't like. We don't have information. And breaking down this stuff the way like you and Erica break broke this stuff down. Because when I'm looking at it from like the surface, I'm like, damn, yo, this does look incriminating. But like you said, it's more character assassination, so to speak. And when you sit down and actually break this thing down, it's like, yeah, there's really nothing really concrete that they can really put on them. Aside from the transcripts, that looked bad. But at the end of the day, like you said, it still doesn't basically say the end game. Like, it doesn't, like, what were you laundering? How much? Like, it doesn't say. Or even when he says, you know, hey, you pay the woman this amount and say it's taxes. Where is it in writing, like you said, that you were getting paid X amount of money? You get what I'm saying? So it's a lot of, like, it's a lot of gray areas, so to speak. Yeah. So the taxing and the money laundering part is is their best bet at getting him. If, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what that's what I would say. Because like Erica said in the live stream, now that the, the thing is, now that they have him captive, now they could take their time to go through his stuff to see what can we possibly get him for. Mm-hmm. That that's yeah. like their that's like their their best bet of yeah. the situation, yeah. trying to see what they could get him for. But you guys definitely, I, I give you guys definitely convinced me because, like I said, when I looked at it on the surface, I was like, "Yo, this stuff look incriminating." But you, you guys did a very good job on breaking this down. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let us know what you think in the comment section and what is your analysis on this video as a whole. Do you think Andrew Tate is guilty or it's a whole bunch of nothing? I would love to hear your take. Cause like I said, speaking to these two great individuals, they oh. definitely convinced me. 
and I have a different perspective. Because I was coming in thinking like, oh, they they gonna say he's he's incriminated, but I digress. They made me a believer and they convinced me. So mm-hmm. did they do the same for you guys? Or you're like, nah, he's guilty. Let us know what you think in the comment section. We would love to hear your take on it. And again, Rex Wu's channel, the link is in the description. So definitely hop over there and subscribe. Because as you see, brother got some knowledge. He broke some stuff down. With that being said, if it's your first time here, consider hitting that subscribe button and clicking that notification bell so that you don't miss videos like this. Like this video, share this video, comment on this video. It's once again, this is Matter of Opinion. I'm your boy, Walls P. I'm your girl, Erica. And we got Rex Wu. (laughs) We will catch you guys on the next episode. Peace. It's a matter of opinion.